So with head coach Stephen O'Donnell ahead of the first round of the FAI Cup this Friday, it's at home to Bray at Richmond Park with a 7.45 kickoff. Steve, the league is going great and focus now turns to a big cup match on Friday. Yeah, exactly. We have a little breather from the league now. Um, very happy, especially two good home wins, two clean sheets the last two weeks. Um, so we roll on into the FAI Cup. We were beaten in, the, in our first round of it last year against Finn Harps away. So... You know we're treating this game as serious as we would any any league, league game. Bray are a good team. They have some very good individuals that can hurt you. So like we're under no illusions that we're going to have to play well to, to get into the next round. Yeah, the cup has always been very important to St Pat's and for yourself as well as a player. You've won three, one with Bohemians and two with Dundalk. So you've got your own history as do a couple of the players, Ian and, and Chris, about one with the club. So I'm sure they'll be reminding the lads this week of the importance of the competition. Yeah, definitely. Well, the end goal is it's the biggest domestic day in in our calendar. You know, we get to play at the Aviva. Huge occasion for, for both sets of fans and obviously to play on a surface like that in an arena like that is something that every player wants to do. So that's the end goal. The only way you get there is by taking care of business in, in the early rounds and then you roll on into the latter stages. So, you know, it would be it, it's a great way to sort of conclude the season. Looking forward to an FAI Cup final and getting there. And as I said, it's a great day out for players and staff and for their families, etc. So, you know, that's the end goal. As I said, this is the first step towards it. And, you know, if we take our eye up to, off the ball, we won't be getting to that end goal because Bray are capable of doing damage. Yeah, it's another home match as well, a third week in a row for a home game. And since the fans have come back, Stephen, four wins from four in the league at home, more great pictures of supporters and players than yourself at the final whistle last Friday. So it's been a nice place to be with the fans back and another one hopefully on Friday. Yeah, great. I think the fans are starting to sort of identify with the team. Obviously, they'd, they'd seen the work of the team for the first half of the season on their tellies and that. And being there, I think they appreciate the work that's been put in by the players and that. And they are cre creating a little bit of, I think there is, a, you know, the, an identification with the players as I said to the players after the match on Friday all supporters want to do is turn up and know that uh, everyone taking part and everyone out on the pitch is giving their all for their club and I think that's what they see they see great attitude from, from the players and they can identify with that and really appreciate it so it is a good place to be it's a good place for players to play their football as I said you know even little flat spots in the games there's no sort of uh, dissent or discontent among the crowd they're, they're, they're there with the team and fully behind the team um, you know all the way through a game so you know it's very nice even after a game for the fa uh, for the players to go around and thank the fans for, for, for coming to the games and, and getting behind them you know it is it's a good atmosphere around the place and, and long may it continue and we know our onus is on to give the fans things to cheer about and go home positive obviously we're still in a a tricky spell in, in life in general, you know, and it gives a good sort of distraction for people to come down and interact and mingle with each other and support support their team like like our fans are doing down at Richmond. And I think it's given them sort of a, probably a lot of people a new lease of life having games to look forward to. And just being the third game on the spin, they're getting spoiled. We're going down to, the, to, to Richmond. So, you know, we're looking for another victory on Friday. And, you know... Um, it is a good place to be at the minute and, and the players appreciate that and they really value the, the, the supporters' uh, support. And just lastly, on the opposition, Bray, they came so close to win the First Division last year. They're right in the hunt for the playoffs this campaign. A couple of former Saints in their team as well. What do you make of their threat? Uh, we've got Premier Division players dotted all around their team. As I said, if if they, if they we're not at it and we treat it like oh, uh, Bray, or, Bray are in the First Division, they might be playing at 11, a level below. We'll come unstuck, as I said. They, on any given night, they'll be, they, they are a Premier Division team with the players they have. And, if players at the top end of the pitch they can do damage and uh, as you said a couple of boys that w we've had who are, who are excelling at Bray and I'm delighted to see that so we look forward to welcoming them back and then um, you know hopefully as individuals they play well but we get we get the victory and, and we move on to the next round but um, looking forward to the game um, you know with the weather we've had over the last few days uh, training is is very intense so you have to cut down the durations of the of the drills you're doing and the sessions you're doing because it does take so much energy out. As you saw the heat on Friday, even at a quarter day, kickoff was was incredible. So uh, we look after the players during the week and make sure that they're all systems going full of energy for the game on Friday.